Okay guys, so, so far in the orientation course, you've heard from a lot of folks um, who have given you a lot of really good advice as far as being successful here at Sand Hills. Um, as you move along as a student and things start to come up, you start to hit some roadblocks or, or have some challenges with academics or personal life, um, just know that that is a very common thing um, that happens along your educational journey. And we've got some really nice folks here in this segment who are gonna tell you about the resources that they provide that can help you sort of overcome those obstacles and keep you moving uh, down your path of success. Uh, so to start off with, I have a couple of really awesome folks here, uh, Tim Hunt and Rosa McAllister McCray, who are both personal counselors here at Sand Hills. And they're gonna tell you a little bit about the services that they provide here at the college. So Tim, we'll start with you. Can you tell us about yourself and the Counseling Center? Sure. My name is Timothy Hunt and I'm a licensed clinical mental health counselor and a licensed clinical addiction specialist. I'm also a transactional analysis practitioner and a level one personality focused treatment provider. And I am the director for personal counseling here at Sand Hills Community College. And I'm located in 229 of Stone Hall. And myself and Ms. Rosa McAllister McCray we are the face for mental health here at Sand Hills Community College. We provide individual counseling, group counseling, as well as couples counseling. But with COVID-19, those services currently are being provided telephonically or video session. And so how can students get in touch with you to set up one of those um, sessions with you guys? So the best way currently is through email or phone. Um, they can call or they can email us, um, as well as I've had students send messages over Instagram uh, to set up sessions. Those are the easiest ways to get in contact with us. Awesome. And guys, we'll put um, Tim and Rosa's information up on the screen for you so you'll know how to get in touch with them and also how to follow them on Instagram. Tim has some really good content uh, that he puts out on Instagram from the personal counseling office. Um, so Tim, in regard to personal counseling, when should a student reach out to you guys to have a conversation? Like at what point, you know, in their, in their journey or um, when things start coming up, should they reach out to you guys? So my, my basic philosophy about therapy and about counseling is everybody needs a therapist and uh, there's never a perfect time. You know, anytime, you, anytime you feel like you need somebody that's gonna be non-judgmental, um, you need a confidential space or just an opportunity to be able to vent or get something off your chest. That's what we're here for. Um, I think the, this age group of 18 to 20 or 30 to 40 or 50 to 60, whatever age you're at, this is the time to work on yourself. You don't necessarily have to have a mental health issue. We can also do what we call personal growth sessions, where it's just helping you to figure out whatever it is that you want to address to help you to move into the next phase of your life. And so Rosa, um, Tim had introduced you earlier, but I did want to point out to the audience that you do provide services at Hope County, is that correct? Yes, I also provide, I provide counseling there for um, the Hope County students as well as um, admissions and financial aid and those things. I'm director of student services there in Hope County, so I service both um, counties. What advice would you give a student, or what can a student do if they are concerned about another student? So Tim talks a little bit about um, how to make a self-referral, but what happens if a student's concerned about a friend or classmate? Any student can, you know, come to me and say, I have some concerns. They can even actually bring a student over uh, if that student is willing. Uh, uh, of course, the student has to be willing to want the services, but they can bring the student over and say that I have some concerns and then leave the student with me and, uh, and then we'll go over the issues that the student have. So um, if any student see that their friend is having some issues or going through some um, problems, certainly we want you to um, care enough to bring that student over. Yeah. And is there any place on the website that a student can make that 
type of a referral, maybe even anonymously? Yes, we have um, an app called Maxian, and actually it's not just for students. It is for students, it's for faculty, and it's for the community. And any issues that seem sort of strange, um, they can make a referral, and, uh, and then we will reach out um, to the students. Exactly, so it is on the website. Thank you for bringing that up. Absolutely, thank you, Rosa. In addition to counseling services, we also have a tutoring center on campus. I'm here with Shalisha Russell, who is from our tutoring center. Um, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the services that you guys offer? Uh, my name is Shalisha Russell. Uh, I am the coordinator of tutoring, volunteer, and disability services on campus, as you just said. And uh, what I do is I run the tutoring center. I also direct all of the volunteers and I direct the disability services on campus. Awesome. So you are in Logan Hall. How would a student go about getting a tutor? Well, we have two ways that you can do that. You can come to the tutoring center, which is in Logan Hall, room 115. Uh, they can fill out an application there. And we also have an application available online. That seems to make it pretty easy. So at what point should a student consider getting a tutor? We suggest as soon as possible. Tutoring starts a week after classes begin, so we suggest that the tutor uh, be obtained as soon as possible. They can uh, apply as soon as classes begin, and we start this, the process of apply, you know, finding a tutor for them as soon as we can and actually get them assigned and um, that set in place as quickly as possible. But they can apply throughout the semester all the way up until the end. We actually do um, continue tutoring until finals. So if a student requires ADA accommodations, how and when would a student request those? Um, a student can request accommodations at any time throughout the semester. Uh, it's, it's up to them to actually let us know if they want accommodations. It, this is a self-disclosed state, so we are legally bound not to ask them, but they, they can request that at any point throughout the semester. It, the earlier, the better, because it is, it is not retroactive. So the sooner that they request that, the better for them. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here, Shelly.